how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and this is the LG Remark from Sprint. It's an eco-friendly phone so a lot of the materials that it was made from were recycled materials. The packaging was made from recycled paper from a sustainable forest. So if you want something that's good for the environment, it's the LG Remark. Now, does it actually work? I mean, you want a phone that's nice to the planet, but you also want a phone that's nice to you and has features that you can actually use. You need something with a good QWERTY keyboard that you can use for messaging, something with a decent camera that you can take pictures with. I mean, you're willing to sacrifice some things because you know it's good for the planet, but, and also the fact that it's a feature phone, you know you're not getting top of the line features here, but you still need something that works. So we're gonna do a full review of it, see how it stacks up against other phones, because there are a few other phones out there that are good for the environment. So how does it stack up? We're gonna do a full review right now. Um, I'm Cindy from PhoneDog.com. Let's go check it out. So we'll start with a basic uh, overview of the hardware of the phone. The screen here is a 2.4 inch LCD screen, has a resolution of 320 by 240 and supports up to 262,000 colors. On the left side here you've got the 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. And you know it would be nice to have a 3.5 millimeter but it's only 2.5 so at least be able to buy them at stores. Uh, volume rocker and then there is a micro SD card slot so you can use your own card for that. It doesn't come with a card but it does have the slot for it and then on the right side dedicated camera key and then the uh, USB port, micro USB port and then that's pretty much it. The keyboard slides up from the bottom. It's really nice. I like the keyboard. I'll get into a little bit more detail um, later on but you can see it's a full keyboard has a whole um, whole row for the space bar and then exclamation mark question mark period. It's nice that they have all of those instead of having to use function to get to them. But anyway, that's the keyboard. I'm going to get more into detail later on. And then that's pretty much it. The phone has a really smooth feel to it. I think it's just the material and then the way that it's designed, but it feels really solid in the hand. And the back here, this is the camera. It's a 1.3 megapixel camera. And then the speaker grill there. I pointed out in the unboxing video how it's shaped like a leaf, which I don't know. It's pretty cool because the phone is actually like I mentioned earlier, is uh, eco-friendly and so it's made out of 87% uh, recycled materials and so and then this is the battery cover. The phone ships with a 900 milliamp hour battery and you're gonna get about 5.5 uh, hours of talk time and uh, which is about 330 minutes. I'm trying to get the battery cover off. There we go. So there's the battery and it's just a standard lithium lithium ion battery so put that back on there. So back on the front here, uh, it's a basic Sprint feature phone. It doesn't use Sprint's one-click interface, which is sort of interesting because a lot of their feature phones uh, these days do, uh, especially with LG when they partner with LG. But but it doesn't feature it. That could be happy news for you if you don't like the one-click interface or. If you do, you could, you know, try another phone, but it's just a basic, uh, you can see here you've got the menu and OK button, so that's what you use to get to the main menu. Then, of course, you've got these two soft keys, D-pad, a back button, and power button, talk, and speakerphone button. In the main menu, it's just your basic, uh, basic options. You've got web, messaging. There is an email client. And uh, it's a very nice little email client. I can't show it to you, obviously, because it has my email address in it. But it is really nice. It's not just a, you know, basic kind of generic uh, email client that you may expect from a feature phone. But it's actually got a nice design to it. You can sync all of your accounts so it can support uh, Yahoo, Hotmail, Gmail, anything like that. So I was pretty impressed with the email client. Uh, since we're on messaging and email, I'll talk more now about the uh, the keyboard can see it here. It does have the number pad within the letters, but uh, the keyboard I thought was, was great. It might be a little bit too cramped for some people. I thought it was fun. I thought it was great for me, uh, but I do have small hands and I recognize that. So if you have larger hands uh, or if you're a guy, it might be a little bit too cramped. And also, if it is too cramped for you, one thing that could get in the way is this lip that you see here that you've got on the edge uh, where the phone kind of kind of has the edge right there and that could kind of get in the way because if you need space if you're trying to move your thumbs across the keyboard um, it is going to cause a little bit of you know 
a little bit of difficulty there, but I thought the keyboard was great. Even though the keys are somewhat flatter than uh, most feature phone keys these days, they still have enough of a grip to them to where you can use them pretty easily. I'll type out a, a sample message so that you guys can see it. So we'll go here and type out the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So there you go. Really easy to use. Also, um, while I'm here, I did talk about in the previous video when I was unboxing it, how I thought it was strange that the period is all the way over here. Uh, usually, just with with any keyboard, but especially on, on a computer keyboard, the period is over here. And I thought that that would bother me. I thought that it would kind of be kind of difficult to get, get used to, but it really wasn't. And I think it's because the keyboard is so small, it's not very wide. I think, you know, you don't have to reach over pretty far to get to it. It's not like it's a full keyboard where you're like stretching over. It's a smaller keyboard, so you don't have to reach over very far to get to the period key. So that actually didn't cause any problems uh, if you're wondering about that. But you got your emoticon key here, so that's pretty cool. It, it is also very nice to have this shortcut uh, text key, so you're, if you're just in the main menu, we'll delete that. If you're just in the main menu here, you can just push that and it'll take you to messaging. So that's actually a very handy feature. And uh, overall, I thought the keyboard was great. I had no, you know, no problems with it. And uh, it's a very nice keyboard overall. So moving on to the camera. It is just a 1.3 megapixel camera, so obviously it's not going to be the best in the world. And there's not really a lot of editing features either. There are a few features that you can use uh, before taking the picture, for example, changing the white balance or uh, the um, the resolution. A kind of a weird thing is that there is a zoom here, you can see. You can zoom while taking a picture, but you can't use the zoom feature whenever you're at max resolution. So you can see here, the resolution right now is at 1.3 megapixels because that's what the camera is, but you'll have to go to uh, settings and take it back down down a notch to a different, to a lower quality, and then you can use the zoom. So um, that's kind of a weird weird thing, but I guess it kind of makes sense in terms of quality. But uh, again, there are some fun frames and, and image controls. Now, one of my, uh, one thing that really bothered me about the camera is that the placement of the camera is the worst in the world, and it wouldn't seem like that because on pretty much every phone the camera is on uh, the right side like this. But there's really no way to hold it, um, especially if you have the phone open. Um, you can see this is how I would naturally hold it, but obviously you can see my finger is in the way. But there's no way to hold it comfortably where your finger doesn't block the camera. You'd have to hold it like this. Uh, you can't hold it anywhere near it because then it'll show um, if you you know got a grip like that. I tried every which way um, to hold the camera without my fingers, and you can see it's still kind of. Uh, I tried every which way to, you know, to find a way to where it wouldn't show my hand or my finger and, you know, there is a way but it's just not very comfortable and then there is a capture button. You can see this soft key now function as a capture button, um, but it's really more comfortable to use the OK button to capture instead of the uh, the actual capture button. So it wouldn't seem like it because you're like, well, you don't have to reach over that far, but it does make a difference when you're actually holding it up vertical. Right now, when it's flat, it's kind of easier, but if you're holding it up the way you normally would, um, the placement of the camera is just, is just bad, and it got really irritating. Um, and then also it was just easier to use the OK button. So um, that's one thing that I, I really couldn't get over about the phone, but it took, you know, OK pictures. I mean, it's a 1.3 megapixel camera, but, but they were all right. You can see I used one of the effects here and uh, made it a negative photo and then took a couple. And uh, with the zoom, it was also fine. Again, like I said, you're going to have to use a lower resolution, but anyway, that's the camera. Let's go back to the main menu here, and there are a few... Um, apps for social networking, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'll go here to Twitter and uh, just show you a little bit of how it, how it looks. So I'll sign in and the app itself runs kind of slow. You know, a certain page is going to take a little bit, little while to load and typing a tweet, sending it, 
um, you know, that kind of took a while, but it actually does work. And uh, once we get into the actual app, you'll be able, you'll be able to see that you can actually uh, upload photos uh, using a tweet. You can attach a picture. Now, one thing about this is that whenever you attach a picture, you can't use one that you've already taken. You have to take a picture right then. So that's, you know, kind of annoying. But but it does work. You can see your at replies or your mentions, your messages. You can search Twitter. So um, I was actually really surprised that, um, you know, that it came with, it, you know, its own app for uh, Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter. But it does. And then a few other um, few other apps that you can get. Going back to the menu, um, if you know, you can see here it's got family locators, so you can use that if you got a family and want to keep up with your kids. Some of the tools, it does support Bluetooth, has a GPS navigation, also has a music player so you can get all your mp3 uh, songs over here, the email client like I said, and so it's a, it's a pretty well equipped feature phone. Up here you've got the web, web browser, and the web browser was alright. Again, this is a feature phone, so you're going to have a few problems. It's not the fastest in the world. I did a test of uh, using the web browser and going to a website to try to find a local Starbucks uh, in my area. I had to, you know, change um, you know, the area I was in, put, set it to Dallas, Texas, search for Starbucks, find one that was close to me. And that whole process took uh, about three minutes, which really isn't bad. Um, you know, that's that's pretty good speed considering everything that I did. Now, Phone Dog's page takes a while to load just because of how, you know, content heavy it is with all the pictures. But you can see it does load, and then it will eventually load the pictures, though right now it's just basic HTML. So the web browser, it's going to be slow, but that's kind of something that you can expect with, with a phone like this. So anyway, guys, there it is. It's the LG Remark from Sprint. And yeah, it doesn't have, the you know, it's not a very high-end phone. It doesn't have all the greatest features, but it's good for the environment. And so if you're someone that's trying to be eco-friendly, do something that's good for the earth, and you want a phone that's still, you know, that's still got the features that you need, then the LG Remark is something for you. Obviously, it's not going to have the best of everything, but it's something that's good enough. And I think the fact that it has a great QWERTY keyboard is just an added bonus. And you can still take pictures even though it might not be the best. The battery is going to last you long enough. It's going to last a couple days. And it has a web browser. So it's got everything you need. It's not that heavy. It weighs about 3.8 ounces. So... I would definitely recommend it, and uh, you can pick it up at your at your local Sprint stores. I believe it only comes in this one color, um, but anyway, thanks guys so much for watching, and uh, I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Be sure and check out PhoneDog for all other news, updates, and videos, and also play the One Paw Bandit to win free phones. Anyway, that's, that's the LG Remark. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.